in a bit of a surprising turn of events, like the most consistent uh, comic book universe that you could read uh, for the past two or three years has been Miller World. Mark Miller has really put a focus and emphasis on a lot of the newer titles he's done. And a lot of the stuff has just been absolute dynamite. You know, we got King of Spies, uh, the Magic Order stuff going on, Nightclub, Nemesis Reloaded, obviously all culminating with a big game, The Ambassadors. Don't want to forget that one. That was another amazing series. And it turns out Mark Miller is taking his goods, his Miller World Universe, and he's leaving Image Comics and going over to Dark Horse Comics. And I think this is uh, a good stuff. I think it might be really, really good for consumers, especially because Dark Horse does certain things far better than Image Comics does these days. As far as Image Comics, I don't know if this is the enormous loss that it would have been maybe a few years ago because Skybound is establishing this Energon universe where it seems like Transformers and some of these G.I. Joe titles are going to be good sellers. Obviously, Spawn has had an enormous rebirth over the past five or six years. Saga has come back. They did lose The Walking Dead, but they do have some, some decent selling uh, steady titles right now. So Image isn't the worst place in the world. Although I guarantee you they didn't want to lose Miller World because Mark Miller was putting out a pretty decent amount of content over the past two or three years. And a lot of it has been very, very good. Like I said, basically, when you look at just a line of comic books, there's nothing that even comes close to the overall quality of what Mark Miller has been doing. It's been absolutely fantastic. And there are a lot of really great creators over at Dark Horse right now. Matt Kent, as an imprint over there, he's absolutely amazing. A lot of people love Mike Mignola and his Hellboy stuff. And there's some really cool stuff going over at Dark Horse. Obviously, they still got Berserk, uh, the big manga thing that does a lot of their sales as well in bookstores. So I think this is all good stuff. Now, let's get to some of the details and my thoughts on this. Mark Miller, the legendary comic book creator behind such acclaimed series as Wanted, The Magic Order, Jupiter's Legacy, Kick-Ass, Super Crooks, and Kingsman, The Secret Service has officially joined forces with Dark Horse Comics. Forbes Entertainment can exclusively reveal under this deal, Dark Horse becomes the brand new publishing home of Miller's creator owned titles. All of them are housed under the Miller World banner, whose films and television rights were scooped up by Netflix in August 2017 for an estimated 30 to 50 million dollars. And that was a big deal. That really is the gold standard that most comic book creators are looking to emulate these days. You know, back in the day, everybody wanted to kind of be able to emulate what Alan Moore and Frank Miller and some of those types of creators have done. Uh, today, everybody wants to be the next Mark Miller. They want to make their own shared kind of creator-owned universe, make it popular enough, get it picked up in some mainstream entertainment, blow it up, and have somebody like a Netflix go out there and just buy the whole shebang with the intent of adapting all of it and basically putting it up on streaming services or movie theaters and stuff like that. And Mark Miller is the pioneer that basically created this strategy and is the only one that's really ever... Uh, done it to this level, to this degree. Certainly, uh, Frank Miller has had a lot of great work in Hollywood as a screenwriter, and a lot of people have bought his stuff, but mostly it's been ones and twos kind of here and there. Whereas Netflix bought like all of Mill World wholly, and also I believe Mark Miller is also a, a Netflix executive uh, because of that deal or whatever. I do believe there are a few Miller World properties out there that before. Uh, Netflix made the purchase had already bought the rights to things. So there are a few properties kind of out there that could be adapted by other companies. But uh, it's really cool what he's done. And I think a lot of people look up to Mark Miller. And I do want to say this. Uh, there's a video out there, just like a 60-second clip from this dude. His name is Gary. And he owns a comic shop, I believe, in the northeast of America. And he's got a comic book YouTube channel called, I think it's Comic Book Palace. And it's really interesting stuff. And I'll be honest. For the amount of subscribers that he has and the amount of views for video, like he's absolutely nailing it. This dude actually has a pretty decent following. And because he kind of looks like a geek and he didn't say the right things, everybody decided to pile on this guy and just try to tear him to shreds. Jamal Eigel uh, and a few other people out there, they were just going at him hard. It's really embarrassing stuff. Donnie Cates, of course, he deleted it because he didn't have the uh, testicular fortitude to, to see it through to actually live up to the words that he was actually stating about the guy. Mark Miller is one of the few people out there that went to bat for the guy. It was like, hey, listen, he's a comic book retailer. He's owned the shop for 30 years. He's on the front lines. And he's the one that's taking a lot of the losses right now. We might want to listen to the guy. And I will um, give a couple of other people credit out there. Gail Simone also went to this guy's defense. So I thought that was a class move on her part. And I think Jimmy Palmiotti did as well. But he also deleted his tweet because I guess... It got a little bit too hot. Maybe he got some of them Whisper Network DMs that told him, you might not be allowed to uh, support this guy 
that's only been a comic book retailer for 30 years and stating his opinion. So uh, it definitely makes me feel better about Mark Miller and the fact that he's willing to go out there, you know, as a Netflix executive, as the guy that owns Miller World, as a creator that's been so successful and actually go out there and defend the little guy. So a good job on Mark Miller. I'm not surprised by this, but that's another reason that I definitely uh, have a lot of admiration for the man as a comic book creator, just as a human being. So I thought that was cool. I imagine people are thinking that I'm going to do a video about it. Uh, it's definitely been covered, and there ain't nothing I got left to say that anybody else hasn't said already. Uh, so I'm probably not going to do a video on that. I am going to talk about it with Aaron on the Geek Fix podcast on Patreon, but it won't be out there for everybody. But uh, we do have some more information. The collaboration includes five new titles, all of which are slated to be doled out across 2024. While further details won't emerge until the spring, we do know that one series, Nemesis Rogues Gallery, drawn by artist Valerio Giordano, will continue the blood-soaked saga of Miller and Steve McDivin's felonious, ultraviolet riff on the Batman archetype. And that is very exciting stuff. We're getting five new Miller World titles in 2024. Yes, please. Miller World was almost the only thing that was getting me through 2023, especially getting into Big Game and how enormous that was and how great it was. And I'm definitely ready for some more Nemesis. Now, Nemesis wasn't in the best state in the world at the end of Big Game, but I believe this will explain the comeback of the character to hopefully be even bigger and badder and even a bigger threat within the Miller World universe in the future. I would imagine, and I don't know this, I have talked to Mark, but I didn't ask him what the titles were outside of Nemesis Rogue Gallery. I imagine he's got to do another volume of The Ambassadors, even though that book took like, I think like eight years to finish because he got so many awesome artists on it. They weren't able to just finish it immediately. But there was something enormous in Big Game that's going to have everyone excited for another volume of Ambassadors. Hopefully we get more Nightclub because there's another plot thread that ends in Big Game that says we need more Nightclub. As far as other stuff, we got to get some more Magic Order. So there's another title out there I'm not really sure about. I don't think it's going to be wanted. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Uh, but we could be getting some more Hit Girl, something like that, hopefully. So those are the titles that I would imagine will be in the five. We're going to get Nemesis. We got to get Ambassadors, probably Nightclub. I figure we're getting more Magic Order, and there's a good chance we get Hit Girl as well. But there's also a, a great chance we get something completely new that hasn't even announced yet. But I think that's all very exciting stuff, and that is good news for, for Miller World, Mark Miller, and Dark Horse Comics. And I think it's going to be a really good a marriage uh, between publisher and creator. And I think he's going to fit right at home at Dark Horse. And there's something that Dark Horse can offer to Mark Miller and Middle World, and especially Mark Miller fans, because we do have a lot of Mark Miller projects that are going to be coming up in the not-too-distant future on uh, Netflix and a couple of other movie projects that are going out there. I believe there's supposed to be a kick-ass like, reboot or whatever. I imagine we're going to get some more Kingsman and stuff like that. And Dark Horse does something so much better than Image that it's not even funny. Readers will be able to whet their appetites for the fresh releases with reprints and or oversized Dark Horse Library Editions. We're scheduled to get the Magic Orders Volume 1 and 2 in June and August. Nemesis Reloaded in July. Nightclub Volume 1 in July. Wanted in Big Game Library Editions to be determined. The Ambassadors Library Edition to be determined. And the Magic Order Library Edition to be determined. And the library editions are kind of like the big thing because that's what Dark Horse really does better than basically all the other kind of more mainstream publishers in American comics. There are a couple of book companies that do special editions of comic books. And I know IDW I have some cool stuff with like artist editions or whatever. But me personally, I think the Dark Horse library editions especially are like the fucking gold standard in American comics when it comes to collected editions. And I think it's absolutely badass that we're going to be able to get a wanted, a big game, Ambassadors, Magic Order, all in these really, really awesome, high-quality, curated, collected editions. And it's something that, quite frankly, Image Comics has never been able to replicate. They've never even tried to. You know, I, I like Image Comics, but Dark Horse just does so much better with their collected editions. I think this is absolutely amazing uh, for Mark Miller fans because we're going to get better collected editions of all the stuff that he's put out there. And there are projects coming out onto Netflix and onto movies and stuff. And I imagine Mark Miller is going to be ahead of the curve working with Dark Horse and making sure that these collected editions are in print and ready for when projects based on his comic books and characters and stuff actually make the light. Something that Marvel and DC cannot do. Although I will give Image credit, when Invincible Season 1 came out, 
you know, Invincible, like the first compendium or whatever, was already in print and they sold it out almost immediately. And I think um, they're going to be able to work really well together getting that stuff out there. And this is also interesting timing. Obviously, I didn't work this through Mark Miller, but this is something I'm going to be doing on the Patreon in the very near future. We're going to call it the Comic Guild, and we're going to be going through Miller World in order from the very first issue of Wanted to the very last issue of Big Game. It's probably going to take us about two years to do this because we're going to start at the beginning, go to the end. We're going to do it every single week. You'll be able to read every issue of Miller World along with us. And if you support the $5 uh, tier, which is the Pass the Helmet tier, this will be included in that. Not only that, we're also going to do a read-through of Planetary by Warren Ellis, which I think is going to be a lot of fun. It's something I haven't read personally, and I brought somebody into the fold that's going to do these reviews with me. They're going to do both series. So he's basically signed on for two years and put up with me at least. So we're going to do uh, Middle World. We're going to do Planetary. They're going to be on the least expensive tier possible, and hopefully people are able to join us for that. So it'll be a whole lot of fun. And then I've got some ideas after Planetary. We're definitely going to get to Alan Moore's Miracle Man, but there's something I want to do in the meantime that's more uh, something that I really love, but I think a lot of people enjoy that. So uh, it was good timing. Maybe I'll be able to pick up uh, some of these collected editions before we make it to them during the Comic Guild. And people are saying, what's a Comic Guild? It's kind of like a reading club. In the same sense that a foot detail is kind of like a pedicure. When my wife and I go to the spa, she gets a, a pedicure and I get a foot detail, which is similar but not the same. A comic guild is kind of like a reading club, but it's for guys. And that's what we're going to be doing. And we're going to be covering comic books. And I'm really excited about that. So if you haven't checked out the Patreon, there's a link. I definitely check that one out. And definitely support Mark Miller because he's one of the good guys. He's one of the people that's out there trying to do something to improve the industry. He's already got plans to go back and do like a Superman story. It sounds like he wants to do something with X-Men. He's out there encouraging Marvel and DC to do something to bring back good creators. He's out there encouraging other great creators to come back and do a little bit of something with DC and Marvel to help revitalize the industry. Of course, there are morons out there that absolutely hate the guy. Uh, the biggest one being Rich Johnston. When he came up with this plan, Rich Johnson decided to take five paragraphs and dump all over him before admitting Mark Miller was 100% correct. You will not believe this one. There's also a link in the video description.